So when you talked uh, for this book to somebody like Tom Axworthy, the uh, One Man Liberal Brain Trust, what does he think is happening? Well, um, there is a, still a hope, and, and I have one too, you know, and I, I have to stress, uh, I'm politically neutral, I attack everybody, mm -hmm. um, and I mean that. I hear tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Mr. Harper has been known to make mistakes, and uh, I think they're counting on uh, people eventually becoming uh, fed up with the one-man government. Uh, you know, liberals were one-party government, and that seemed to be okay uh, to them, but one-man government is, is different. Well, what are people looking for in a leader today, do you think, in the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party? What do Canadians want? What are we hungering for in a leader? Well, first of all, they want somebody who's strong. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big country. You, you've got to have uh, some strength in the middle, which is why Trudeau uh, won so many elections. Not because he was liked particularly, but because he was respected. And that's a huge leap, mm -hmm. uh, which Maroney never understood. And he wanted to be liked. And that's, you know, it's a natural yes. human um, emotion. Well, but somebody but wrote the uh, book, uh, What Are the Boys Saying, about yes. Mulroney. Yeah. And it was about that. He wanted to know what everybody thought. And you say you have to be a Trudeau who says, yeah, I flip the coin. Yeah. <laughs> who cares? Who, Flip the well, finger. Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, and uh, this is what I believe, and this is my vision. I, I, I must take the t two minutes to tell the Trudeau story. Oh, uh, what, in the in the early days when he was at your house? No, no he was oh. well, he was prime minister. Okay. And he was worried about uh, bilingualism not not going over in Western Canada, so he sent uh, Judy Lamarche. <laughs> out to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And he came back, she came back, and uh, he uh, asked, so how did it go, Judy? And uh, she said, well, I'll tell you this. Um, um, I was uh, in Alberta, in Red Deer, and I asked this uh, woman who came to see me about it, I said, uh, so what do you think about uh, French, uh, the future of French in Alberta? Mm -hmm. And she said, if English was good enough for Christ, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. And there it is. But uh, as you know, uh, I think it was David Peterson who said, the difference to, between making a tough decision in politics and arrogance, and you wrote it in here, if people agree with you, you're a great leader. If they don't agree with you, you're arrogant. So as you look at the uh, Liberal Convention coming up in January, where are the options for renewal? What do they need to do, in your opinion? Well, uh, all the things they need to do require money, require uh, uh, leadership quality, and, and, and require a, a, a large geographical base, and they have mm -hmm. none of them, uh, which is why, you know, I, I don't worry about what they require to do. I, require, I worry about what they can do, and, and they don't have the mo mojo, they don't have the, the troops, they don't have the money. To get elected, but how do they attract the money? Who uh, uh, new candidates? Uh, you you mentioned Dan Dan Venier in here yeah. about he's still one of the idealists, yeah. optimistic. Didn't get elected. No, he is one of the exceptions. He he is, you know, if the party has a future, it's it's in him or people like him. But there aren't many Dan Vanniers. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And Dan Vanier ran uh, in my neck of the woods, but uh, as you suggested in the book, he still uh, believes that politics is the highest public calling or one of the highest public yeah. callings and that well. service is important. <laughs> and this country is, I, a lot of people think this country is fabulous and they're patriotic and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't quite figure out where the disconnect is. Well, the disconnect is between the ideal and the reality. Um, you know, I, I too, I'm, I'm an immigrant, and I, I always thought of Canada as having the mandate of heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where everybody else wants to be, and we're here, and we're enjoying that, and that's a great privilege. Um, but uh, you, you can't uh, manufacture that. That has to be an authentic emotion. And we do have real problems, and to solve those problems, mainly financial, uh, we need some kind of leadership uh, that will inspire us to mm -hmm. get past the hurdles mm -hmm. to what we have. And I don't see that in the Liberal Party. Well, and as you suggest, top organization, you have to, uh, you can't have a rusty machine and get elected. You have to be very smart uh, uh, digitally, uh, 
uh, social media wise, all of that, and I'm sure there are people in the party who are, but again, it takes money, yeah. it takes planning. Well, and it takes um, a different attitude. You know, it's really the attitude that defeated the liberals and that it defeated by, by uh, I mean, and defeated in spirit. You know, they were working um, to earn a salary instead of to crusaders to back a cause, which was how the liberals started. Sure, you mean trying to preserve rather than uh, inspire. They're trying to preserve yeah. what yeah. they've got, preserve yeah. the power. Yeah. It's a power thing. Yeah. We've well, been the natural ruling party. Why wouldn't we continue to be the natural ruling no. party? That's right. It became a bureaucracy. Mm. And they, you can't do that. Now, you can do that for maybe one election or two, but the record shows that they've been doing that for at least four elections, right. probably more, ever since Trudeau. You know, I was reading a, uh, an interview uh, with Michael Ignatieff about uh, what he needed to do to pull this country together. Uh, and he said that he had to make us all feel more Canadian, more united at the end of his time in office than when he started. And somehow he couldn't connect. It, the foreign policy thing, his, his uh, position on Iraq or yeah. Afghanistan, he didn't talk about it enough, in your opinion and my opinion. Yeah. There's a wonderful story about political connection. It has to do with Roosevelt when he died, and Eleanor Roosevelt was obviously in the mm -hmm. uh, funeral cortege, and she saw a man uh, uh, fall in, in, in uh, complete uh, agony on the sidewalk as the, as the funeral went by. So she got off and went to see him, and she, and she said to him, oh, did, did you know my husband? And he said, no, but he knew me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of connection mm -hmm. that Ignatiev Big connection, could but never he knew make. me. Uh, yeah. You bet. And uh, when Ignatiev went on the buses and uh, to the barbecues and all of that, uh, he folksied up a bit, but he still didn't no, hit no, the... That, that whole thing was a huge mistake because he, ha having been out of the country mm -hmm. and not coming up through the party, he didn't realize that all those people were liberals. He was preaching to the converted. And, you know, and they couldn't understand that he had very successful bus tours right. and all that, but the polls never went up mm. because he was preaching to people who were already going, going to vote. Going to vote for him. So go somewhere else. Get the people who aren't going to vote for you and convince them to vote okay. for you. Uh, uh, Trudeau, you p pointed out many times, altered the uh, Canada's character. How will Harper alter Canada's character, in your opinion? Well, um, I make a prediction in my book that if Harper is in office for two terms, uh, he will make uh, so many changes in, in values, in Canadian values, that um, the country will become unrecognizable and we may have to change its name. Two? <laughs> <laughs> well, does it start with a U and end with an A? <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. Thank you, Fanny. Nice to see you. Great as always. Peter C. Newman, When the Gods Change the Death of Liberal Canada, and it's on the heels of the secret Mulroney tapes.